Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Muhammad Faris bin Osman. I am presenting a case report of epidural hematoma in a child. Case reported by Spine Unit, Orthopedic Department of Hospital Kuala Lumpur. For the introduction, the neuroaxial blockage is an excellent modality in current practice of pediatric anesthesia. Spinal and epidural anesthesia can either be administered alone or as an adjunct to general anesthesia for post-operative pain management. The utility of neuroaxial blockage in pediatric anesthesia has been established. It is generally has a high safety profile with rare occurrence of complications. Spinal epidural hematoma is considered one of the rare possible complications of this procedure, yet its incidence is unknown. This is a case of a five-year-old girl presented to pediatric surgical department with history of generalized pruritus for two weeks, along with jaundice for five days. The diagnosis of colidocal cysts was made after a series of investigation performed. Pre-operative coagulation profile showed protamine time of 13 seconds, INR of 1.3, and activated partial thromboplastin time of 46 seconds. Hence, emergency excision of colidocal cysts and hepatico duodenotomy was performed with epidural anesthesia as post-operative pain management modality. Epidural catheter was inserted at L1, L2 level and it was removed on day two post-operatively, at which time a one centimeter swelling was noted to be present at the epidural injection site. She also developed back pain that radiates to her bilateral lower limbs, which was on the right side, with later progress to bilateral lower limb weakness within days with motor power of 3 from L2 to S1 bilaterally. This is the urgent MRI scan of the spine was then revealed L1, L2, posterior epidural hematoma causing spinal canal stenosis. At day 4 post-operatively, child developed hypovolemic shock with abdominal distension, which is sound of abdomen, then suggestive of anastomatic leak. The emergency L1 hemi, hemilaminotomy and de-roofing of L2 was done. The same setting with laparotomy, evacuation of clots, and diatomies of bladders for the anastomotic leak. Intraoperatively, there was blood clot 2 cc at the level of L1 L2 and was completely evacuated. This is the blood clot noted at the L1 L2 level. Post-operatively, neurology improved with power of 4 from L2 downwards bilaterally, except that she was unable to, do to dosiflex her right ankle. On follow-up after two months, the power of the left lower limb returned to normal, while that of the right side was generally 4 to 5. Right foot drop was still present, which subsequently resolved during follow-ups. For the discussion, the epidural hematoma is rare. In general, it can be classified into traumatic, spontaneous, and associated with bleeding disorders. Epidural hematoma has been known to be one of the complications of epidural anesthesia. A similar case has been reported in 2017 where patients are at risk of coagulopathy with surgery being performed because of acute liver dysfunction. In both cases, neurology improved subsequently. The clinical presentation of epidural hematoma is similar to that of spinal cord injury. Diagnosis of epidural hematoma need to be excluded whenever a child presents with back pain and neurological deficit, especially in the setting of epidural catheterization. It is also must be suspected in those patients with liver dysfunction. Therefore, coagulation profile should be regularly monitored and ensured to be in, to be in optimum level before proceeding with neuroaxial catheterization. The MRI is the modality of choice to rule out epidural hematoma due to its superiority in soft tissue differentiation compared to, CDS, compared to the CT scan. Urgent decompression and evacuation of hematoma must be performed to reduce mobility. The options of surgical intervention include hemilaminotomy and hemilaminectomy depending on the size of the hematoma. In our case, the evacuation of hematoma was performed within 24 hours. For the conclusion, the incidence of epidural hematoma in pediatric population is rare and underreported. However, it is undoubtedly one of the established complications of neuroaxial anesthesia. 
Extra question must be done with regards to the technique, monitoring of patients' coagulation profile, also identifying patients at risk, especially patients with acute liver dysfunction. Physicians and surgeons must be aware of its clinical presentations and means of investigation due to its urgent nature of intervention in order to minimize morbidity. That's all. Thank you.